Hi, it's Face Attack. Uh, this is a project I had been making um, last year when I went on a bit of a um, RetroPie uh, handheld making build spree. Uh, I kind of got a bit burnt out and kind of like left this one because I kind of come across a few black, black walls and I didn't really have the energy to finish it so I went off and done some other projects and other bits and bobs. Um, to be honest, I don't think I could have finished it without 3D printing and back then I didn't have a 3D printer so it's kind of like bittersweet that uh, it wait, take, took this long. What it is is basically an all-in-one board to, that replaces a Game Boy Color board and lets you put a retro, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero W in there if you want. Um, uh, there's, there's, it was kind of like one of them builds that I was like, oh, I want don't even know if it was even possible. Uh, I started out with one of these screens, which is the 2.4 inch um, screens. They're soldered on. As you can see, it's the same height as a Game Boy Color screen, but it's a bit wider, so I had to chop a bit of the case away. I've made this and uh, trying to make as minimum minimal amount of uh, modifications to the case to make it easier to build if anyone wants to. Um, there's another thing that stopped me, um, which was PCBs, it was going to have to be a big PCB that was over a hundred mil long. Um, but when I come back to this project, I was like, why don't I just put it over two boards? Because also one other thing that was stopping me was um, deciding what to do about uh, the controls on it. Because um, you, you, some some people like different controls. Some people like really clicky buttons. Uh, some other people like these other. I like these type of buttons, which are kind of like soft membrane-y type ones silent buttons, uh, some people like to use just the membranes um, so I kind of thought I don't really want to have to spin a whole uh, a whole board and then populate it just to trust the controls out with this I can literally solder on any controls that I want um, the top board was basically has the screen it has the Raspberry Pi, it has all the other sound bits, uh, power and all that kind of stuff on it uh, and then the second board is literally just controls and the sound with a speaker and a uh, headphone jack, so you can put your headphones in old school. Um, the like I say, there's some modifications to the case. I add the power board, which uh, kind of spans the two boards. It kind of uh, hangs off the edge of the power board, uh, the top power board. Um, but I didn't really take and see. Uh, it's quite a high board. The uh, inductor coil on it actually sticks. I had to drill a hole through the case. And then behind the screen, it actually does stick to the back of that screen, uh, which is kind of one of those things that uh, you don't really realise in, in when you're looking on a computer screen and then you actually try and put it into real life. Uh, the power button, I had to put that like right over here. It actually sits uh, sits partially under the screen, but it does work. Um, the um, the multi-port multi connector, I changed that for a USB-C port, but that kind of... It was too recessed back for a normal um, head for a normal um, charge cable to work, but luckily the ones that I made myself, they actually fit in because they are actually quite long and skinny. So in the new build, I'm gonna push that uh, over the case over the uh, board a bit more, so it'll stick through that gap more. So it should be able to fit any cable in, which is nice. Um, the, the the downside of using going in the Game Boy Color case is stuff have to be in certain places. Like there's only one place for a charge port. There's only one place for a headphone. Uh, wheel. There's only one place for a switch. There's only one place for a speaker. Headphone jack has to go here. Controls here. Screen here. So to try and fit everything in was a bit of a nightmare. Um, I had to make this uh, 3D printed fake uh, Game Boy game to go over the uh, cut out and uh, some other stuff I removed. Uh, you're probably wondering what this is. This is go was going to be an amp board, um, but the amp board um, I couldn't get to work. So I'm going to scrap it in my next one. I don't think I really need it, uh, to be honest. Uh, I've got a little cut out here for the uh, SD card, but that's covered uh, with this cartridge, which has got a magnet in the case, and it's got a screw uh, on the sides of the uh, Game Boy game, so it keeps it in place. The battery pack, the batteries, just go in this, uh, in the same battery bay, but I've just reused the springs in different order and wired them up differently, so you can put uh, two LiPo cells in there. They aren't actually... They are actually rechargeable, they aren't, you can't just put a Game Boy, you can't put normal batteries you'd put in a Game Boy in here, they will not work. Just if anyone was wondering. Uh, it's charged, uh, it's got the power bank board here, like I say, you can see the indicators. That's kind of why I went with the Sifu case to see uh, the battery indicators and to see the uh, Raspberry Pi activity light, you know, when you do the shutdown. Um, 
the uh, like I say I've used these squishy buttons on mine but I'm going to redo another board uh, spin that's going to have different options hopefully basically you can put any you can put any switch you want in them which would be quite nice um, I had to um, went through a whole ton of iterations for the d-pad and for the other ones the d-pad started out like this and then ended up like a ds style oops a ds style um one with just the corners just to hold it in because there was that little a space uh you know to get it to work i've gone with the clicky buttons for this start and select because you don't really use them that often um, and there was not literally enough space in the case for these squishy ones to go so i just thought i'll just go with them um, I'll give you a quick demo of the sound because I say the sound I think is fine without the amp board I'll give you Dr. Mario because it's probably a nice good soundtrack to a game with this obviously you can only play Game Boy uh, Game Boy Color games but you can also play uh, Nintendo games and uh, NES games which is quite nice I've changed the um, save because there's no L and R buttons on there so I've remapped it to selecting uh, B for load and then selecting A for save but as you can see as you can hear it's quite loud I think it's loud enough to play um, loud enough to annoy people around you anyway which is obviously what you don't want but you can uh, the volume wheel it does take it all the way to nothing and all the way back and that obviously works for your headphones as well I'll give you a quick demo of the uh, Vayner and NES game because why not? You can play Game Boy you can play any game that this will run um, oh no that doesn't actually work um, you can actually play any game that, that uh, the Raspberry Pi will run but obviously you're limited with the controls like maybe some of the Game Boy Advance games that don't use the L and R buttons you could probably get away with uh, playing on this but as I've seen in the past it's not really um, the fast, I don't think it's fast enough, you'd have to overclock it really. Um, and maybe some of the uh, the, NES, the SNES games, you could probably get running on this if you obviously um, didn't use all, need all the controls. Maybe even some of the PlayStation ones if you were uh, that mad. But you know, something like you know, some of the Crash Bandicoot I think works, doesn't it? So, as you can see, it works. It works, fills the screen quite well as well. It's uh, perfectly playable. And as you can see, it's quite loud. Yeah, um, like I can say I'm going to put these um, files up on the um, my GitHub and my blog. So you know, I wouldn't suggest that you actually build this, but if you were desperate or you wanted to use take this and run, it's made in KiCad, so you can just take the files, uh, modify them as all any way you want. Um, which is you know, if you want to, if you want to skip ahead, because it might take me a while to get the new boards uh, designed and get them shipped out and done. Um, I would say if you are going to get these boards made you need to get them made in a one mil thick pcb it doesn't cost any more than it does the 1.6 which is the standard uh, thickness but the original game Boy color pcb is one mil thick so you have to, so you have to um, uh, go with that these are actually done at two different board houses that's why they're slightly different um slightly different greens but yeah as usual a uh, blog post with more info uh, than i probably said now and um, yeah thanks for watching bye